According to NFL Network's top 100 list, these are the only Eagles who are among the 100 best players in the National Football League. These five, the only ones. And yes, I will confirm what you're thinking to yourself. Carson Wentz is not on the list. He is not considered to be one of the top 100 players in the National Football League by this list. And I will point out as we bring my guys back in here for this conversation that two years ago on this list, Carson Wentz was listed number three out of the whole league. Last year, he was 96th. This year, Dan, your guy is not even top 100. What is your reaction? Greeny, let, let, let me have a little bit of a rant right here. Okay. So first of all, I want everyone to know that when the players are asked to vote for this, usually it's coming off of practice. You get a sheet. You're going to write down like the first five or six names, and then we hand it back to like the PR staff and go, here, you guys just figure it out because we're exhausted. We don't want to do anything. But for the sake of the stupidity of this, I brought glasses because apparently anybody who voted for this list needs glasses because you need to watch some tape to realize what good players look like and what bad players look like. Second of all, I am convinced that this list was made by Dominique Foxworth or <laughs> Mina Kimes or Marcus Spurs. You know what, Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman made this list because this list stinks. <laughs> Carson Wentz not being on the top 100 list. This, this is why, this is what happened. Because he's not new. He's not the new fad. It's like, it's like Greeny, when you go to a barbecue nowadays and everyone's like, here, come try this amazing finger food. It's great. And you look at it, you're like, wait, it's feta cheese, watermelon, and mint. Just give me pigs in a blanket. Or when you're sitting around with your friends and they're like, look, I got this great app we can play on my phone. We could play a game. Just, just put down Scrabble or Taboo and let me bust your head in that. Or like when you're sitting around with your family and friends and everyone's like, man, play this song. It's the greatest song ever. No. Just put on Frank Sinatra and let it ride and let me have my glass of red wine. The, 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 the newness of some players has taken away the vision of what great players look like. 2017, he's third in the league. And last year, he's not in your top 100. Last year, he's got a better completion percentage. He threw for 1,000 more yards. He threw for the same interception. His yard per attempt is just about the same, and yards per game about the same. How can a guy go from third to not in your top 100 when he did more last year than he did the previous two years when you ranked him at third? It doesn't make any sense. I believe Max Kellerman is behind this, or <laughs> Mina Kimes is behind this, and I will not stand for this buffoonery. <laughs> that is very well said, and as we cross the top of the hour, 10 a.m. Eastern time, Mike Greenberg and this football crew with me right now here. Get up on ESPN. Lewis Riddick and Adam Schefter. And we're all, we're all, and Lewis, we're all entertained. Frankly, I had a difficult time following some yeah. of what Dan just said there, but I think the crux of it was <laughs> that he is down on the list. Uh, Lewis, your thoughts on Carson Wentz, the season he had a year ago, and what it projects to look like this year? Yeah, look, this, I'll, I'll make one quick, uh, you know, comment about that list. It's just stupid. That, that's just flat out stupid. For him not to be on the top 100, I mean, come on. Then, I mean, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, you're just trying to send a message or you're just trying to exercise an agenda. I mean, that, that's just dumb. I mean, the list loses all, loses all credibility when you do those kind of things. Now, fast forward. How does, how does, you know, looking at 2020, how does this team look? Again, I've already alluded to this. He did all the things that he did last year from a statistical standpoint with a bunch of guys who were changing week after week after week that Doug Peterson was having to teach on the fly what this offense was supposed to look like. And then he was only able to really maybe run four or five different pass plays and maybe one or two run plays. That's really what Carson was working with. Going forward, they've absolutely restocked the perimeter of this football team, and they've added all kinds of weaponry for Carson Wentz to now try and utilize as they chase another NFC East crown and potentially an NFC championship. And for him to not be on the top 100 list, I mean, I, I really don't even know what, uh, what else to say other than that's just dumb. That, that, the whole list loses all, all of its credibility when you do those kind of things because Carson is without a doubt probably, you know, easily a top 20, top 30 player in the NFL, and he's a top 15, top 10 quarterback in the NFL at the very least. I, so I, to I, not be on the top 100 list, come on. Yeah. Get serious. I'm with you. I've actually predicted him to be the MVP of the league this season, and, and so obviously my expectations are high. And the biggest thing I thought he did last year was answer the biggest question that remained about him.
which was his leadership ability. And Dan, we talked about that on the show a million times. That Shefty, we know that was one of the things that people wondered was yeah. did he really own the locker room? They all seemed to be lined up a little bit more behind Foles when he was there than they were behind Wentz. And it felt like he really answered that in every conceivable way. So Shefty, as you talk to people around the sport, what do you hear about Carson Wentz? And, and, and what, if any, is your reaction to his being left off the top 100 players oh, in the yeah. league? Well, it's a ridiculous list. It merits no conversation, but he is a top quarterback in the league. He's a guy that I think a lot of teams would love to have on their team if they had an opening at the quarterback position. He's in position to get this team to the playoffs this year. He's in position to get this team on a deep playoff run. He's one of the great quarterbacks in the league. The fact that he's not on a list, again, is without merit, is ridiculous. Merits no further conversation. To me, Carson Wentz is somebody that I think if a lot of team builders were constructing their team, they would want front and center playing quarterback on their team. Yeah, and so, Dan, let's just go back to that quickly because with Carson Wentz, we've always seen the ability. We've always seen the physical toughness. Sometimes you questioned his ability to, 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 to take the, 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 the care of himself on the field, and that's why that sometimes resulted in the injuries. But we know the biggest question about him was about his ability to lead that group. And, Dan, I know you felt he took a huge step forward in that direction last year. Yeah, Greeny, and that's why I said his 2019 was actually better than his 2017 when he was, you know, the runaway MVP because up until last year, he was this great talent, right? This this guy that was doing a lot of special things and he was very much Patrick Mahomes before Mahomes came on the scene in 2018. But last year, it transcended or transitioned from talent to quarterbacking. And quarterbacking, throwing the football. It had to do with making the right play, and sometimes that's, you know, a two-yard check down because that's the right play or getting our team into the right run because that's the best opportunity for our team to be successful. Managing the game because of what's around you, and that's where you saw this maturation and growth. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.